Okay, let's look at a little more um, discussion on an example that's already in this sample problems. Continuous non-homogeneous example, and there's actually a continuous homogeneous example that was connected to it. Our system is a 2 by 2 A matrix, B, C. We have our input for this part was a unit step function. And we found our um, response. The total response x of t is the unforced response e to the a t x of 0, where the input is 0. And then the forced response, where the input is not 0, and we have to do our convolution integral. Okay, so I'm not going to go through the working of the problem, because that's done in the example problem. But I, want, I had some question on um, the vector discussion I did at the end, so I want to do that do a little more discussion on that. We did find our e to the a t in the previous example, so we use that again when we do our integral. And we're also given um, our initial condition. Initial condition in x was just 1, 0, I believe, yes. And we had our eigenvectors from the previous problem were 4, 5, and 1, negative 1. Okay, so we found the modal response in the other, um, on the other problem, but let's go ahead and draw what our response looks like um, in, in our state space. So we have 2 by 2 systems, so we have 2 by 2 state space, and so when we draw our coordinate axes here, we'll have x1 and x2. And we can put our initial condition in, in terms of x. Okay, so our initial condition was 1, 0. So x1 is 1, x2 is 0. So here is our initial condition. So for our system response that we're looking at, we're going to start here and um, look at the response. The um, eigenvectors we were looking at in terms of the modal coordinate system. Our first one is 4, 5, so let's just go up 4 marks, one, or over 4 marks. 1, 2, 3, 4, and up 5 marks. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Since remember, the eigenvectors aren't a specific um, length, they're just in a certain direction. So this is the direction, the 4 fifths kind of direction. For our eigenvector 1, say q1, and then our other eigenvector, we call this q1, and then this other one is q2, has go over 1 and go down negative 1, so something like this. So here's our q2. Okay, so we could define this as um, it looks like it's an orthogonal, but may not be orthogonal, but another coordinate system, and then our initial condition in this coordinate system would be something along, it would be something that looked like a 1, 1 or something. Although I haven't calculated that. Okay, so our system trajectory, then here's where it starts. Our initial condition is right here, so where does it go? Well, we have our solution in terms of time was x1 of t is 10 over 27 e to the negative 3t plus 14 over 27 e to the 6t plus 9 halves. So let's start with, that's the, in the x1 direction. So in this direction, as time goes on, this first term is going to shrink. The bigger t is, the smaller this term gets. We have a constant term. And this is the term that's going to dominate as time gets larger because we have an e to the positive exponent times t. So we're going to have a growing, a growth in t. Overall, it's going to grow, x1 is going to grow. x2 is a sim, has similar terms. Negative 10 over 27 e to the negative 3t, the term that shrinks away. 35 over 54 e to the 6t, so it has positive coefficient, so it's going to have a grow, growth again, and then plus a negative 15 over 54. Okay, so again, as time goes on, these two growing exponential terms will continue, will dominate, and so it's going to go unbounded in the x2 direction and unbounded in the x1 direction, so it's going to basically approach 
it can't go across did math we haven't really talked about but it can't go across the eigenvectors and so it's going to go up and approach and we know that it uh, approaches the q1 direction q2 must be the the eigenvalue that's the shrinking one because in terms of q2 the response is going down 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 closer to the q1 axis which means it's going closer to q2 being zero and that's what an exponential with a negative exponent would do in terms of q1 is a growing one and it's going to go off to infinity okay so we have a response something like this as time goes to infinity so like i just tried to say here as q q1 of t will approach infinity as time goes to infinity but q2 of t approaches zero as time goes to infinity okay so we get the eigenvector coordinates just by plotting the eigenvectors on the same coordinate system on the x1 x2 coordinate system and then we can look at our system response that we've solved for um, and notice that even the unforced response has the exp growing exponential in there because it's basically it's an unstable system and so it's going to um, grow I guess if we could somehow manage to get our initial condition to be exactly on if we can get q1 to be exactly zero and not grow at all um, we could come back down to the origin and come to the back to the equilibrium point here at zero zero but um, even with mathematical methods you have rounding and you would get enough error and you probably would eventually take off so it's very difficult to do that practically